So, as per carrying on this week with the the hot hatch reviews, we are here today with one of, if not the most requested car to review on the channel, the 2017 Ford Focus RS. Now, after reviewing the um, AMG, the A45 AMG last episode, people were furiously commenting like, yes, get the Ford Focus RS reviewed, get it done, and give your opinions on it. And to this, I was ecstatic because I love the Ford Fiesta. I know it's a completely different model, but I love the Ford Fiesta ST, and forever that will hold a good hot hatch area in my heart because to me that was one of the best hot hatches ever. But I think it just got replaced. This, like I said, is the 2017 Ford Focus RS. If you want to purchase this car, it costs 59,000 credits, which is 10,000 credits less than the A45 AMG. And for this, you get 350 horsepower, 350 foot pounds of torque, weighing 3,446 pounds. And that is a lot of power, a lot of performance for 60,000 credits. Also, you get two free fives on the front, two free fives on the rear, street tires are standard, and it's all wheel drive and front engined. So, good grip. Uh, street tires mean it's got a lot of grip. All wheel drive means you can punch out corners. And uh, front engined, obviously, like every hot hatch is meant to be. Um, this car has an exquisite turbocharged 2.3 litre i4, which heads the car from 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds, 0 to 100 in 11.2 seconds, 60 to 0 in 149 feet, 100 to 0 in 353 feet, with a top speed of a blistering 174 miles an hour. Now, to some people, they are just numbers, but to anyone who knows the hot hatches, these numbers aren't actually as fast as the A45 AMG. But, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a worse car. In fact, every single day of the week, every single reason I get, I would take this Ford Focus RS over the A45 AMG. In fact, I would take this over most cars I know. This car is genuinely phenomenal. It accelerates super duper fast. It's got an incredibly high top speed for a hot hatch. It's got four doors, four seats. It's spacious. It sounds nice. It sounds incredible. And it looks... Oh my god. Ford, you... Oh my god. This car is incredible. And... It is, honestly, this car is, you know like when you have your dream cars in there, the Ford GTs, the McLaren P1s, the LaFerrari, and then you have the realistic dream cars, and this for me, the Ford Focus RS, is a realistic dream car. This car is so impeccably good, and I, I honestly struggle to find a problem with this car. And, and that is a big thing for the car to live up to when it when I make out to be that good. But look at it now. There's no drama. There's no signs of bad handling. There's no nothing. It just sticks to the road. It just gets accelerated. It just gets through the corners. There's not even understeer from the all-wheel drive system. And if you were here last episode when I was reviewing the A45 AMG, you would know I hated the all-wheel drive system and it had so much understeer and the way I said improve it was to add more grip and what Ford have done with the Focus RS is they added more grip to a four-wheel drive system and it is phenomenal it is so incredibly good I, I can't say enough this car it was, when I drove the Ford GT I was left speechless when I drove the Ford Focus RS I was speechless for a completely different reason. The 4GT grips up, it's super, super, super fast on a circuit. It is an incredible car. The Ford Focus RS, it, you don't expect what this car can do. It is such a, what the kids now call a sleeper car, but in a, in a, I don't even know it, it's just so incredible. 
and for that you can't really explain it. You really do have to experience it for this to kind of be be known. I just I absolutely adore this car. Like I, it's just so good. But if I had to have a couple of issues, the one main problem would be the brakes. They're not terrible. They're not terrible by any means. In fact, they're perfectly aligned for a hot hatch. Because you're going so much faster in this hot hatch compared to the others that it feels like they're a lot less effective. But in reality, they're not. They're exactly perfect. I just wish because I'm more going to race this car around, I wish they were a bit better. And one thing which I hate to say, I have not drove this car a lot, but it doesn't have much character. The 4 GT has character. It's Larry, it's oversteering, it's mad. This car is just sensible, it's just got his head on, but then again, that's character in itself. And well, actually, sack what I just said, this car is incredible. The only issue, if I had to pick one, is the brakes. But we're now heading to a place where we don't need the brakes, which is the drag strip, where this car obviously had three attempts to go as fast as possible. And I won't lie, it was not good here. The uh, Ford Focus RS got a time of a 12.829, which we're comparing it to the A45 AMG, got a 12.329, so it's a good 0.5 seconds slower to a quarter mile. But now we would test this car in the drifting field. Now, what most people wouldn't know if they only heard about this car from Forza Motorsport 7 or Forza Horizon 3, is the fact that in real life this car has a drift mode and what that does is you click a button it goes into drifty mac larison and um, and slides a lot <laughs> it drifts it does it very very well so I, was, I had high hopes obviously we've got it in race mode for Forza because we can't really change that and Forza puts it in its most race up um, fashion that it can because that's the type of game Forza is and that's what they're meant to do so you can't really blame them for it just I wish we had the availability to put it into drift mode um, but as you can see we don't really need that the car drifts really well and it is so much fun yeah you see me I'm kind of throwing it around and I don't know this car is just incredible like seriously seriously incredible to drift and the good thing is, because this thing has just the right amount of power, what you do is, with every all-wheel drive car, go pretty quickly into a corner, rip the handbrake, and then fully just mash the throttle. This car has just the perfect amount of power to spin up the wheels and kind of neutral drift, where you obviously are um, turning into the drift to try and catch it. But this thing just slides and it just kind of goes and does really, really well. Which makes it pretty good for holding long drifts. Um, pretty good for just getting a lot of angle as well. Although in Forza you don't really get many points for your angle. As you see here, I did lose the points there because I was running in a bit deep. But yeah, this, it's super, super good at drifting. And now we're coming to the end of the, the lap. Now what it looks like, this car looks like it's doing incredible. It looks like it's been amazing. But, the thing is, the more flamboyant you are in Forza, the less points you really get. And that sucks for this car, because this car's flamboyant, which means it didn't get as many points. Which left the Ford Focus RS admittedly into 5th place with 30,956. But if you were here with A45 AMG, you know what, that went into 3rd with 34,736. That's about 4,000 points difference, which is a lot. Um, but... I don't know, I would, again, I would take this car over the AMG though, for drifting. Now, the real test. The lap times. This is where it gets interesting. So, when I reviewed the A45 AMG, obviously I'm just talking a lot about this because this is the, the car we are really comparing uh, it, the Ford Fiesta, Ford Focus 2. Um, I said that this that, that car really didn't suit this track all that much, but the Ford Focus does. Because of how good it is at turning and steering and getting around a corner without going crazy off 
the track because it's not got enough turning because it was understeer, it can get around these S bends perfectly well. And it could just power out with them. It's all oh, drive system is genuinely phenomenal. And now we come up to the Dunlop curve now, and you can just power it around this corner so incredibly well and the car is just so composed yeah you see i'm going a bit wide because that's how fast i am pushing this car because i have so much confidence in it the degners this thing gets braked so hard stopped and now we come to the second degner and last uh, last episode we saw the a45 mg go wide there but this episode no the full focus just stays on the track it just does what you tell it to it just goes where you tell it to go. Now, the uphill hairpin, a, car, a place where most cars get undone, but again, this car is perfect up this, up there. It has no wheel spin, no drama. It just gets itself punched out of the corner. And now, onto the long right-handers. Where this car is, this is a real struggle area for a lot of vehicles, because it's like, you turn in a bit, then it straightens out, then you've got to turn in more, and then it straightens out, then you've got to turn in even more, and it straightens out, and you've got to keep power on. Now we're into Spoon, and this car has no problems in the state. it just accelerates, and it just it breaks perfectly, gets around the corners very, very, very well, and just gets punched out incredibly well. Now we're onto the straight where the Mercedes only got about a 134 miles an hour. This car getting up to a good 143 miles an hour, which is a good lot of time, a lot of time gained, should I say, on that Mercedes. And then it can keep itself on the track perfectly well, keeping it on the racing line and getting it so incredibly quick. Coming down the hill hard on the brakes into the Casio Triangle where this thing will really, really excel. The all-wheel drive system, the no understeer, punching it out of the corners, up to the final corner now, and it is now just acceleration towards the straight line, uh, towards the finish line even, in a straight line. And, well, as it goes, it crosses the line. Now this puts the Ford Focus RS excitingly into 18th position with a 237.742, which, if you remember the AMG's time, was a 237.8. 1.8. So the Ford Focus finally beats the AMG by a good tenth of a second. Now, I compared this thing to the AMG all episode long because that is the car we have took around this track which is more relatable to the Ford Focus RS and obviously it's going to have its competitors. Now, what you would know is that statistically the AMG is better, but performance wise I will say every single time that the the focus is better and in my opinion the focus just dominates it's 10,000 credits less than that uh, A45 AMG and for that 10,000 credits left you don't get that much less uh, that much less performance and to be honest the performance this gets is just incredible and I can't knock this car for anything. It is genuinely incredible. And if you have not gone to buy this car in Force Motorsport 7, what are you doing? Go and purchase this vehicle immediately. It is so, so good. But yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you leave like and subscribe for more car reviews in the future on the channel. Um, also, comment down below what car you want to see reviewed next because, like, like the last two episodes we've took um, your guys' considerations in and your guys' wants, and we have done them fine. Our next episode will probably be on the brand new Honda Civic, so that should be interesting. Comment down below as well what you think of the Ford Focus RS, and do you think Mercedes A45 AMG or Ford Focus RS? Which one would you buy? Anyway, that's it from me, Timmy's Hyper, signing out.